All right, so we're gonna make a tray for straps. I decided I want it to go right in here, come up another four inches from this C-channel. So now that I have that in mind, what I wanna do, I'm gonna take some measurements. I know that I want it to start here and come up, and then the tray to go from here to here, and then come back up. So I made a mark here, I used a square, set it against here, ran down, put a mark, used another one, ran down, put a mark. Now I have center line here, and I came up here, put a square here, now this one's bent, so instead of throwing a square on that side, I just took a measurement, and it's 22 and a half, so I went 22 and a half again. So now that we have those markers there, I wrote down on a piece of paper, 22 and a half, Took this measurement from here to here, 33. Took this measurement, 14. And then I took one of these, which is an angle finder, and set that up here. Found out my angle, which was 65 degrees. And now you could trace that out and then cut it by grinder plasma, like a hand torch. But I came in here on CAD and took all my dimensions. All right, now we're at my plasma table here. So I'm gonna open Google Drive. Now that it's off the plasma table, I just brought it over here and I'm gonna just grind the corners real quick, get off all our dross here, which it leaves pretty minimal and get rid of this rust so it's ready to paint after we weld it up on the trailer. Alrighty, now we gotta fit it up. Looks pretty good. But, you know, you can notice back here, if we set anything in this little container, they're just gonna fly out the back. So we need to create something that'll go from here up. And we gotta remember that we need to also block off these channels, but leave the wires to go in. So we'll need to make it here, and then we're gonna need to make one up front as well that will go here. Now for the up front, I have this material here, which is left over from an old job. So they're just, I think this is three inch strap. So I'm trying to make all of this with scrap metal. So this is also scrap. And the best place I found to get scrap metal is if you go to old companies that are shutting down or just old companies in general, a lot of times they have a plasma table or they build big signs and stuff. They'll have a ton of scrap sheet metal that you can buy for extremely cheap and use on projects like this trailer that... All right, so I took some measurements and it needs to be four inches tall for the back section. And then we're going into that C channel, which if you've ever seen C channel, it kind of slopes down like a U rather than a box. So it starts at an eighth inch on the lip and then as we go in it goes to a quarter. So what I've done here is simply uh, 33 inches is where these two bars are. That's our 33 inch mark. And then the C channel is a half inch deep. So I simply just added a half inch boxes on each side. Now I measured an eighth down and then a quarter down and just connected the dots, essentially. Now we're gonna type in trim. And we just get rid of these little sections here. Okay. And now we have our section. And we're gonna do that for the bottom here. We're gonna go a quarter, which is point, or an eighth, point one two five. Select that. Come over here, an eighth, or a quarter, oof, point two five. Connect the dots. And now we have our slope again. And, yeah, trim it. Huh? <laughs> 
And then now we can get rid of everything. So now that should fit into our C channel, and then this will go across the span. Okay, with a little grinding down on these to make sure they fit pretty good. I have it all tacked in place here and fairly square. And we'll weld that seam up later and weld all of these later. Um, now we need to do something about this gap up front here. And then we're gonna make it three inches higher with this strap here. So we're gonna run a three inch ring around here. Gonna take a couple measurements here, cut it, and I'm just gonna use this strop, so I'm just gonna grind it down by hand. So I'll just take those measurements, grind it, grind off the paint, tack it on, see how it looks. If it looks pretty good, I'll probably lay, lay a couple stitch welds down so it's more secure than our, my tacks. And then start taking measurements for the top lid, cut out the lid. I believe I have hinges laying around. If not, can run to like a local ornamental shop and they have those simple weld on hinges. So we're gonna bust that out real quick and then we'll get back. All right, so I just went ahead and welded up everything here. Just basically stitch welds all the way through. Cut out a piece here, put it there. Now these two pieces up top here, I just cut out. I just took a measurement of up here from that corner there to the end of here where I want to make the top of my box go. And now I'm just going to simply tack it up first like that. Do both sides, create a center here for right here. Tack it all up, see if it fits. Make a small piece that comes out from here. Tack that up and then make a lid. And then that's this, this uh, strap holder. All right, so this is just that three inch strap. We just cut it to sections here. And now how I like to do things, cause sometimes your measurements are a little different than whenever you get to the metal up here and it flexes or whatever. So I took my measurement from here over to here and I believe it was 22 and 5 eighths. And so I made both these. And I tacked them up exactly what I wanted and I just took a square, put it just like this here. Got it all squared up there. Did that to both sides. And then I measured in between here. And now because we're gonna have this seam here, I wanted to make this basically a quarter inch smaller than it needed to be which is an eighth for this thickness of metal an eighth for that thickness of metal metal so a quarter inch smaller so that way it could fit in and i can weld down this seam here and blend it together or just leave it either or and make it look nice so that's what i've gone about here i think for my lid as well i'm gonna have it come over these corners so I'll put like a one inch strap I have laying around here all the way around the seam so it's kind of a, like a nicer seal. And then maybe take some weather stripping off of a vehicle or just weather stripping in general and put it. Except I know this isn't watertight and because I'm not making it watertight, I want to make sure it's not watertight. Because if any water gets in here, I want to make sure it can get out. So you can see these seams here are not watertight for sure. And then where the wire comes in, there's a big hole. So that's one thing that you want to do. It either needs to be for sure watertight or make sure it can get rid of the water. So now I'm just going to make this lid and I'll show you when I get back from that. All right, now to make the lid, I did the same exact method as I did for this bottom here. What I like to do for measuring precisely is rather than holding it like this, you burn or bleed an inch. So you start with an inch and then you come out to the end. So that'd be 15. 
but remember we started at one so it would end up being 14 and that gives you a lot more accurate reading so that way you're not getting messed up by your little metal tip here all right so we cut out the lid we did one inch strap on it and then i took another one inch strap and just bent it for the handle so now we can just grab under here you can see the strap and I just welded everything up, blended these corners in in a way I wish I would have done, which would have looked even better, is you take these corners here, get that out the way. You leave this one long piece measure, so I believe this here was 20, 22 and a half. So you would take 22 and a half, 22 and a half, and then add the 14. So you'd have one big piece and then right where you want those seams you take a grinder and grind on the inside of the seam and just grind about halfway through halfway through and then you can fold it over fold it over so that way your seam still the actual outside metal and it looks cleaner than this but you know you can get a pretty clean look just with running a bead down and grinding it off and then now I need to get some hinges and probably some of those little uh, shocks, like struts, I, I guess, that hold up trunk so that way it can stay up like this whenever I don't want it down. Okay, so I just welded these hinges on and I just have, these hinges have a pin that go in and I have that pin going in this way and then this way, so that way you, there's just no wobble back and forth and no slack to it. Because I never plan on taking this door off. And if I do, cut the hinges because that's more than likely why it'd come off. So now I'm just going to, I just vacuumed out the inside here. All the little debris. And then you can see how dirty it just got from sitting here. So I'll just take some uh, like acetone or... Uh, I think I only have brake cleaner, so I'll just take some brake cleaner, spray it down, wipe it up, and then hit it with some paint. And I'm just going to leave all these welds up here because I think they look pretty good. Good enough to leave and show off to the world, I suppose. So we'll just hit it with some paint, and I'll show you when that's done. All right, so I just put a quick coat of paint on it. I did the... Uh, Open it up to the inside and then I did the bottom because remember this is going to be going on the road. So you don't want it to get all rusted underneath. And I like this paint a lot. It's Rust-Oleum Universal with these spray tips. These are like $5 a can. But I didn't even use a whole can on this entire thing. It just works better. It goes down like... It looks beautiful, like, I mean, and I barely even prepped this surface, so. For someone who hates painting, like me, and someone who sucks at painting, this paint is awesome. So, I'm just gonna finish painting it, and then I'll show you the finished product. And boom, Bob's your uncle. So now we have this sleek, small box that looks like it's only three inches tall, but it actually goes, I believe, eight inches or seven inches deep. And I didn't put any locking system on this, which I might eventually do, but I'm sure there's ways of doing it. Uh, I mean, there's tons of ways of doing it. Uh, things that I wish I would have done differently is if you can see up here, you can see that this warped while welding. So I wish I would have been a little more cautious about that and maybe made a support uh, on the inside. But it turned out pretty good. And open it up see what's inside now I can store my straps or whatever else I want to store in there and uh, I hope you learned something and if you have any questions let me know